Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a different video for you today, something I often do when I get a modern slip joint. Before we get into that though, just want to give a big shout out to Thrifty Kniffy for sending over a sticker. We did a sticker swap, hopefully you'll be getting mine soon. But please do go and check out his channel. Awesome traditional knife collector, has a fantastic selection of Rough Rider, Sowelly Stockman's. Definitely go check him out. Once again, thank you John. Okay, on to what we got here. So this was a knife that was kindly donated by my friend Steve over at um, Small Shared Designs. He also is the owner and created this sort of EDC teardown tray. So it's solid wood, handmade by himself. These nice sort of like burnt like effects around it. It has four little spaces for your standard sort of bit size. I've got a flat head, a Phillips head, I've got a T6 and a T8. As well as that, there's like a nice little cutout just here and in that I would sort of keep my oil I'm using and my little bit driver and then this side as well what's nice there's a little magnet so when you are disassembling a knife you can put all the screws in there and the little bolt heads in there just so you know they're not going to get lost so onto the knife he was kind enough to donate this this is the twisted assisted tulip it's a little uh, sort of detent flipper double detent design nice little fifth pocket carry and I'm going to be sort of tearing down this today. I'll show you how to disassemble and maintain this. And as well as that, I'll be changing onto the black G10 scales that were also provided by him very generously. So I will put his link in the description. Make sure you go check out his channel. He's got some fantastic work on there. I know he also does an EDC dump tray as well, which is similar to this, but bigger compartments to just put your daily carry in. It's fantastic. Anyway, let's get on with this. So this has a T8 construction all round so there's three screws so we'll just close the blade and then I'll grab my driver and the T8 and I'd always start with the pivot so this is something I would always do for like a modern slip joint if I was getting one or even a modern locking knife um, I always like to know what sort of oil is in, the, is in the knife and you know if it's going to affect the bearings or anything like that I know this Kirsch oil is great so I, what I'll be doing is I'll be cleaning it all out putting my own little bit of oil in there might adjust the detent make it a bit stronger but we'll see how that is as we go along. So I'll go and start by removing the pivot. And then I would pop that up in the magnetic tray up there. And then we will also go ahead and remove the screw this side. Pop that in the tray. And then as well as that, I would also remove the clip screw. Obviously, you wouldn't need to do this if you're just maintaining, but obviously as I'm changing the scales, the clip needs to come off as well. Up there, take the clip off, pop that up there as well. And then now this knife will pretty much just explode on you. So there we got the top scale, the detent liner. So you can see the little arm there with the ball on. So if you want to make it a bit stronger, you can sort of push that up, pull it forward a little bit. I wouldn't adjust too much though, otherwise you have a rock solid detent. And here we have the internals, pop that up there out of the way. So there we go, you can see the bearings just there. And I always like to make note of which way they're facing on the blade. So you can see you've got a flat edge there and a sort of like a channel there, the bolt bearings sit in. As noted, the flat edge was sat on the knife, so I would always make sure to put them in the right way. I'll pop the bearings just on my sticker there so we can see them. And then they're also bearings that side. While we're doing this, I'll take the opportunity to give it a bit of a clean out. So wipe off any sort of old oil and stuff that's in there. Get a nice little point on your cloth and clean out inside the pivot hole. And there we go. You can see the the detent sort of track there where it's worn off the black coating and where the balls go around in the middle on both sides. Nice little pin there that is a sort of a travel stop so I can show you on this black one so it would run in this sort of groove at the top here to stop it you know opening too far or closing too far okay so and then we got the internal this side you can see it a bit better when it's put together so you've got the internal detent arm backspacer with a pin and then the sort of the Boston bolt or the you know the internal bolt there there's the lanyard loop the pivot which does come out and the bearings again obviously you can see flat side is touching the blade so we'll take the pivot out to start give that a clean of any sort of 
old traces of oil. That can also go up in our little magnet tray. Take the bearings off and pop them up there as well. Now the little spacer will just pull off, but be wary as it's just done there. The little bolts come off and also this pin in here, which sort of steadies it into the liners, is loose as well. So make sure you keep an eye on that. And you can go ahead then and remove this side from the scale. So we'll no longer be needing these green ones. I'll pop them up there. Do a little bit of bending on this just to improve the detent a little bit. Especially with my flipper knives, I like them to you know to have a nice sort of firm open once they're open. Always like to check as well, they're equal both sides of the double detent. So you can see we got a nice sort of little gap there. And if we check this one. Yeah, nice sort of similar gap there, so that's fine, I'm happy with that. Pop them up there. And I would always put it back together with the clip side first. So you can see there's the cutout for the clip there. And there we go. So take the correct corresponding side. It just lays in there, sits in there nicely. You can then take the, uh, the spacer, pop the little pin in the little where the post goes in there, that can rest over the top. Apologies if I'm not giving you the best view, it's quite difficult behind the camera. And we have the little bolt goes in the top hole. And then I would put my finger on like that just to hold them in place. Turn it over, grab the clip screw, at uh, the clip, sorry. That lines up nicely in the channel. Grab myself one of the little screws and just get that sort of tightened up. I wouldn't go mad trying to tighten it um, up to tighten it straight away just because we'll have to wiggle it about to get everything back together. So I just sort of loosely put that in there. And there we go, that is now attached. So the next step I would sort of do would be to get the pivot in there. So it's got a, and you can see that very well, there's a sort of a D shape in the pivot, there's like a flat bit down the bottom. And then you have the pivot which has the corresponding little flat cutout. That stops any sort of uh, free spinning pivot so it's a lot easier to adjust, you know nothing's going to move about. So that would then just fit in there, see if we can get that to go in nicely. So you just got to line it up really. There we go. Careful of that falling out on you like it just tried to on me. Pivot in there nicely and as I said before we had the flat side of the bearings touching the blade so I'll put them the same way back on and then I'll take a little bit of my I use this Kershaw knife oil it's the best one I've come across it seems to sort of last for a long time and it provides like a nice smooth glide so I would take that you need very very little so I'd put a little, see if I can get you to see that, a little sort of blob there and it would sort of make its way around the bearings. And then from there, we go to the blade and pop the blade on. There we go. So this is where we're up to so far. And I would also take then the other bearings and place them the flat side down so they were touching the blade just on there like that and again the tiniest amount of oil just on the bearings just like that grab yourself the other liner obviously the detent ball sticking down and you can pop that on there and line it all up and just give it a nice press into place so you can see there just get it all lined up. Are we lined up? There we go, looks good to me. And what I would do from there, I'd keep pressure on the pivot because it'll try and spring back up, but I'd keep pressure. Grab your other scale and then press it down as you slide it across. And you can hear that clip into place there. And just while you've got the pressure there, I would grab the rear screw or the pivot, it doesn't matter too much, just to sort of hold it together so you can adjust everything correctly. So there we have, just doing up there the rear screw, same as the other side, just enough to nip it up for now. Grab yourself the pivot 
Uh, you can use a little bit of blue Loctite on this. Obviously, if it's like a, a smaller knife and it's going to be sort of fifth pocket carry, I wouldn't bother. Um, but I do want some of my other bigger knives. And pop the pivot in there. Screw that down. Be careful not to over tighten it, but you don't want to crush the bearings. So I would sort of nip it until it starts to bite back. And then we can adjust, tighten that back screw up and the clip screw. And there we have nicely put back together. Nice sort of crisp, crisp action. So there we go, guys. Disassembly and maintenance of the twisted tulip. Let me know what you guys think of this sort of video in the comments if you'd like to see more of these. Um, be happy to get them done. This is one of my favourite sort of things to do with a with a modern slip joint. One more sort of, of the action. Fantastic little knife. Thank you very much for watching. Give me a like, a follow and leave a comment. Love speaking to you guys down there. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.